right, we're going to be watching T-Bock211, who is currently silver on PC, and they're going to be playing Symmetra. I'm currently silver in tank DPS support, but I've been focusing heavily on DPS lately to try to get better one at a time. As the title says, uh, Sim is a character I like to play, and I've been trying to get better with her, but I've been struggling to climb overall. And they posted a bunch of different replays. I ended up picking this one, where they said, start a Sim, then Soldier 76 in King's Row. I played with some guys I know who are way better than me on second accounts, which are plat slash gold, and I got obliterated. <laughs> I would truly love to help to get better, looking for any advice I can get, whether it's sim related or a game related. So we're not going to do a full replay review, um, we're just going to do a relatively short one, because I did want to get the same one in, I was actually planning to do this yesterday when it was originally posted, but I got really busy yesterday. Um, so we're just going to focus on probably the first few minutes of this, because I think your mistakes are pretty common. Um, overall, your biggest mistake is that you just die, all the time, <laughs> for lots of avoidable stuff. Um, and, and we're just going to analyze those kind of one by one. So you start out here, you're going to be spamming, which is fine. I wouldn't realistically expect to be able to harm the, the hounds at this range, but that's fine. I think that spamming bash in there is good. So for the Rhine, you really want to be charging up your beam, right? That's like really your, your key moment is just melting tanks who don't deal enough damage to you. So you want to be zapping the Rhine and just building damage. So it goes from 60 damage a second to 120 damage a second. Um, 60 damage is, is lousy for the record. A meleeing is like 30 damage a second for perspective. So, so at base rate, it's like awful. 120 is good for consistent damage. It's pretty good. So 120 is comparable to about Zarya at half energy. And 180 damage per second is nuts. That's like super good. One of the highest damage per seconds in the game. That is comparable to Zarya at 100 energy. So assuming you can get the stage three, you melt everyone. Um, so that should be your goal, is whenever possible, go ahead and, and melt people to, to um, pick that up. So I would have liked you to see, especially seeing that Bastion was here and the Hanzo was playing top right, the safe spot for you is not on the left, but it is in fact on the right. And you could just zap the, the Rhine right here, and just zapping the Rhine will force their Rhine to not stand here. Because he stands here, he can't swing at you, he'll have to back up, and if he backs up, your Rhine comes in and takes that space. So that's like one way that you could help win the fight already, just by doing a little thing like that. So you're kind of in a run forwards right now. I would be nervous because the Hanzo's clearly trying to shoot at you, and then you die. And you might think, oh, like, what am I supposed to do? I just got headshot at here. This Hanzo does not kill you instantly. There's a lot of chances that you give this Hanzo to shoot at you. So here's number one. Here's number two. Here's number three. And here's number four. You can't have the Hanzo shoot you four times in wide open and not expect to eventually get killed by this. So why is back from his perspective? Okay, so he's got Sonic, so he already knows that you're there, right? That's one. That could have been shot at the Anna. That's two. Could have been shot at the Anna, too. But that also could be shot at the Anna. And then that one finally <laughs> gets you. So it's, like, tricky. It's not entirely clear if he's shooting at you. Could have been shooting at the Anna. But I think that also the problem here is that you're just playing with your Anna. You're literally playing on top of your Anna. And then you end up getting killed here. The other thing that makes it easier is that you see that he snapped at the last moment to go for this kill. Because he's going to see you jump. And this is something I say in a lot of videos, which is do not jump to dodge attacks. So, jump, right, and he's, he gets it. Again, could have been going for the Ana, probably going for you, but could have been going for the Ana. Regardless, don't jump, right? The lessons here are, number one, don't jump. Number two, don't play on top of another hero, right? If your Ana's going right, don't, don't just go right with her. If she goes left, like, literally, it looks like you're just trying to move with your Ana the whole time, like, on top of her. From his perspective, you have to understand, like, this is the angle that he's getting shot at. You see how you're basically dancing with your Ana, like, body blocking for her. That's not your job. Ana's gonna do what she's gonna do. There's no reason that you should have done that. Just go in with your Rhine, right? This, you see how low this Rhine is? You could have just gone in here and just beam down the Rhine. And that would have been fine, and you would have been good to go. So, that's kind of, you know, three problems, right? Number one, don't jump. Number two, don't walk on top of your other teammates. And number three is recognize, like, where you should actually be versus what you are actually doing. So you end up dying here, um, your team ends up capping it without you, or uh, I think they end up contesting it. No, you end up capping it. You're going to be spamming right now, which is fine. Um, again, I would be very careful about, hey, like, where is the Hanzo, for example? So you're going to see that arrow, you just saw that arrow fly over and kill your Baptiste. So you should recognize, hey, okay, this Hanzo's on the right. Whose job is to deal with the Hanzo? Well, it's probably not your tank, because your tank's dealing with, de dealing with their tank, so it's probably going to be your job to deal with this Hanzo sooner or later. Right, you were the May. So I would just kind of wait to bash the tank form out. Bash the tank form's going to end. Okay, it's ended. You have 10 seconds right now to do whatever you want. The Bastion's basically irrelevant. He's effectively not a hero right now for 10 seconds. bailty has been popped, and instead of being up here, helping to damage, right? You see this little Bastion? Like, you should be up here right now fighting. There's no reason for you to be over here. So your general sense of, like, 
flow, like where you should be and when you should be, is way off. Like this is a time where your team desperately needs you to be fighting. I hope you recognize that, right? You see two low heroes, my ulti got popped, Bastion is frozen. If you're right here, you're melting and killing everybody. Or you could be dealing with the Hanzo who's shooting your team in the back. Either one of these things are your job to do, but you are instead way too far away, which is going to result in you losing this fight. You know? Um, and then you're going to end up for teleporting backwards. Like, this is not a problem with your team. Like, your team is doing, I think, the right call there. Like, that was definitely an opportunity, um, and you just weren't there to capitalize. So just simple thing. Like, play with your team. All right, your team pushes up, you push up. Your team backs off, you back off. Don't run in straight lines. See how you're just walking in a straight line right now? This is how you die. There's no reason this Hanzo should have missed the shot on you. At higher ranks, you would just get killed every time walking in a straight line like this. So, like, again, what does a straight line look? Starting right here, you walk exclusively in a straight line forwards. And then you eat this. How could you avoid this? Well, you could even zigzag like this as you move, which would be better, or recognize, hey, this is a very small alley. I could have gone to the left, jump on top of the cart, and then use the cart as cover, and straight back and forth zap. I could have gone to the left over here and zap, which would have been safe. Little thing, just recognizing where is the enemy and how to take cover is really important. But those bad habits you have are why you end up dying. It's because you don't really understand how to stay alive. Right? It doesn't matter if it's a Hanzo, or it's a Widow, or it's a Cassidy, or a Soldier. Like You're going to die to the exact same thing, just not having general game sense of like how to stay alive and how to avoid angles. So you should recognize Ryan's going to have Shatter here. Ryan's get Shatter every two fights. Right? At a minimum, you could be like, hey, look, when does my Rhine have Shatter? In a Rhine Mirror match, the good news is you can use your own Rhine to kind of like roughly track whether or not Shatter is available. Your Rhine just Shattered, which makes it highly likely that their Rhine either has Shatter now or is about to have Shatter. So what you should have done here is played close to the left, and the moment that you hear the Shatter, you could have gone, gone to the left, right? Or when he stepped forward like that, you could have played this, this doorway right here and been safe. So you walk up here, you're clearly not ult tracking at all, and then you're going to die. Ult tracking is a very tricky skill, right? Very, very hard. It takes a lot of experience of the game to do, but that's how you would have avoided that, is just understanding how ult tracking works, and, and then actively ult tracking. Right, next fight. Just spamming, which is fine. Yep, you got a, a good hit on, on there. Bastion ult get popped, so you definitely don't want to be walking forwards. Don't jump, right? So if you jump, the Bastion, if he puts it down while you're jumping in the air, it prevents you from being able to get out of it. So you see how when you jump here, you actually end up jumping too far away instead of playing the close tight corner, which would have been the correct move here. Though, honestly, this is actually a pretty good Bastion ulti no matter what. Um, for a record, you also could have just teleported out of this. As soon as he did this, you could have just been like this, put a teleporter like over here, and then just like waited for it to come down. Great, he's on me, teleport. If he puts it on the exit, don't teleport. Hmm? If he puts one and one, just walk off of it. Got a lot of options there. Hard to do like under time pressure, but I mean, the, the whole point here is to tell you like what could you have done, not what you're actually able to look doing right now at your skill level. So you do a lot of spam reloading for no reason, right? You fire, you have 90 ammo right now, and your Hanzo is still like shooting at your team. You should have been re-peeking right now and potentially could have gotten that kill. So now you're going to teleport bomb for, I would say, no real good reason. Obviously, this doesn't line up at all. <laughs> Team ends up pushing up. Okay, so you're probably like, oh, this is good, I'm charging, right? Let's look at how far your beam goes. So right now you're okay, you're hitting the shield, which is okay. And at this point, you see how far away your beam is? Like, this is several meters away and getting farther as we go. Like, you are not even close right now to hitting the Rhine. Like, you are like over five meters away from the Rhine right now. This can't happen. If you're not able to hit him, just right-click him, right? Or take cover, or do something else that's useful besides just firing this beam out, doing absolutely nothing. Um, it's it's a waste of ammo, it's a waste of time, and it's dangerous too, because it reveals your position. And then while walking away, you end up dying because you end up lingering here too long, because you were trying to hit the Rhine. For the record, you can tell if you're hitting the Rhine because it plays a special sound effect, and it shows a hit marker. So, and it shows an animation. So all three of those things are good tips. It's like, am I actually too far? You'll get that feedback in the game. Right here, you're walking backwards on the straight line, which is why you end up aiming this arrow and dying, so you probably would have died anyway. See? You're just walking backwards on the straight line. Easy kill for the Hanzo. So we'll play it back from the Hanzo perspective. Okay, he sees you. He's going to be looking for this kill. So you're going to peek again right now. And then you're walking backwards right now. Straight line, straight line, straight line, straight line, straight line. Instant headshot. So walking backwards on a straight line from a target is no different than standing still. 
because from their perspective, you are stationary. You're moving, but in a, in a dimension that doesn't matter to them in terms of aiming. So you really can't walk in straight lines. It's like super, super important not to walk in straight lines. Okay, we'll probably do one more. Maybe for your next sim wall. So dragon's gonna come. You should recognize, hey, I hear the dragon voice line. I hear the direction it's coming from. Hopefully you have headset on and not speakers, but you can hear, oh, it's coming from the right. So the dragon's gotta be coming from somewhere in this alley. I've already seen the Hanzo playing here earlier, so I know he likes to play here. Dragon's coming, coming this way, right? Something like this is the direction it's coming. I don't want to be putting teleport right now. I want to be chilling and be like, oh, where's it coming from? I want to back up, give myself as much space to dodge. Here's a dragon. Great. Walk to the side. Like, this is just easy stuff to dodge. And then you just walk backwards and you die with this dragon. It, it looked to me like you didn't even know what Hansel Dragon did based on based on what you did because it didn't seem like you realized that it was going to go through walls and come get you. So I, I would attribute that to maybe just not having enough playtime to understand the mechanics of the game. Team ends up capping without you. Your team is just, like, absolutely dominant. It sounds like you have Smurfs on your team, but... Uh, your team, despite the fact that you've done almost nothing, is still winning this. So you're going to pop Sim right now, right? Sim wall right now. I, this is not a good time for Sim wall for multiple reasons. Uh, number one, there's still a Nano uh, Ryan who's going to ignore the wall completely and hold your team back. Number two, your May is already popping Blizzard right now, so why do you need wall? They're, everyone's going to be running away anyway for the Blizzard. So you want to pop the wall when they are not trying to run away, and the wall is going to block a lot of potential damage. So you're going to charge up right now. Yeah, lots of damage, great. Right, melted, reload. So it's good that you kind of take this path and then you walk to the right and then you just get instantly killed. So there's no reason, you're what, what's called frontlining right now, which is where you get ahead of your tank. So generally speaking, there's no reason to get to, to walk in front of the tank. As most DPS and support characters, there's no reason to walk in front of the tank. There are, situa there are actually a lot of situations where you would, but at your level, I would not worry about the exceptions and just worry about the rule, right? What's the general rule? Don't walk in front of your tank. If your tank isn't that far up, that means there's a good reason. You shouldn't be either. So he sees you coming and you just die. It, it's like, it's so easy. Like you're just walking from the doorway. There's three of them there. There's nobody else to shoot at. You just die instantly. So you either recognize, hey, like where's their focus? Where they're looking? Don't walk into the spot that they're looking. Okay, I'm going to pause there. Hopefully that's helpful. Um, again, mostly it's about less than just staying alive as any hero than it is about Sim specifically. I could have talked a lot more about like flanking with Sim, turret bombs, controlling off angles in space. You're just come back in like two months <laughs> if, you, if you want to talk about that because you're, you're just not anywhere close to that level. And I think that would be just more confusing than it would be helpful right now. Okay, cool. Hopefully that's helpful.